I am really excited to uh, to have on our next guest today. He uh, he joins us live. The fantastic Jeffrey Stevens is with us, and also uh, Don Mazzella and IQ Al Rizzoli as well. JeffreyStevens.com is the official website, and uh, Jeffrey always has amazing books. And uh, Jeffrey, talk to us a little bit about uh, the latest. Well, thanks. First of all, thanks for having me back. And the latest is Enemies Among Us, uh, which is another thriller featuring a CIA agent, Nick Reagan. And this one is kind of an interesting one for me because I wanted to look at what's going on within the government rather than what's outside and terrorists and, and migrants and all that sort of thing. And so I took a different approach in terms of the corruption in big business, the corruption within the government and so on. And so that's the direction I, I went, and we're, we had a great time with it, and we're getting great reviews, so it's a lot of fun. Don, start us off here, my friend. Oh, well, well, well uh, I uh, always begin with, with one. When you say inside the government, what did you mean by that? I couldn't agree with you more, but what do you mean by uh, inside the well, government? Well, in this book, you know, it's interesting. I've been talking about this a lot, obviously, since the book came out. And what's interesting about our government system is we vote for our local uh, elected officials. We vote for our congressmen. We vote for our senators. We even get to vote for the electoral college that votes, that elects the president of the United States. But interestingly, where's the real power, guys, in this government? The real power is in the bureaucracy, right? The, the head of the CIA, the head of NSA, the head of the FBI, the head of the Social Security Administration, whatever it is. And guess what? We don't vote for any of them. They are all political appointees. And so if you took, like, let's take, take General Motors as a simple example. You don't get to be the head of General Motors if you have no experience in the auto industry, right? You work your way up. Maybe you work for a different company. Maybe you work in different areas of business. But that's how you get to be the head of GM. In our government, politicians, namely the president specifically, gets to put a friend in charge of the CIA. And this guy has never done a day of espionage work in his life. And so now he's susceptible. I'm not saying they're villains. I'm not saying they're evil-minded to begin with. But they're susceptible to various influences that come at them from the right, from the left, from the center, and so on, because they are not experienced. And so depending upon who they listen to, things could get pretty screwed up. <laughs> so that's the point of the book. And the point of the book is that the main character, Nick Reagan, is trying to track down a terrorist who was responsible for actions in the prior novel in the series called The Handler. And he gets stepped on by some people above him in the CIA, telling him to back off and not to pursue the search which being an iconoclastic guy, he ignores. And so he goes forward and that sets all of the action into motion. But the fact is you never know in these circumstances who you can trust. So that is, I apologize, a long-winded answer to what I'm about. And also what goes on inside big business, because it's the same thing. People with tremendous power, tremendous resources are controlling this country. Right. I mean, we know this. We've seen the Senate and the, and the, and the uh, House of Representatives hold hearings, whether it's, you know, Meta and, uh, and form X, formerly known as Twitter and, and so on and so on. But other businesses as well, particularly big pharma. So I wanted to tackle all of those things and see what happens to an agent who really is a hero, who really is a patriot, who really believes in this country's values, as I do, and see what happens when he comes up against people who are playing for their own accounts. And there's a lot of going on out there right now, people playing for their own accounts, right? You agree? I couldn't agree with you more. You know, if you look at the career of, um, of the first Bush. I mean, if you look at what he did before he became president, he was probably the mo most prepared president we've had, uh, we've had in a long time. But, but the question I have, uh, what I see more and more is that we have people uh, doing the job but don't know what they're doing. Yeah, well, that's that's my point. And we don't get to vote them out of office when we see the, when we see they don't know what they're doing. We don't. We're not able to get rid of them. And by the way, 
George George H W Bush was an amazing, amazing guy. Um, the way he went down at the end was too bad because he really was a great American. I mean, he was a fighter pilot. He he, he headed the CIA. He served in Congress. I mean, the guy was a, was a miraculous guy in many levels. And now what are we left with? We're left with people who don't know what they're doing. And it's a little scary to me because these people are in charge of all kinds of things that affect our day-to-day -day lives, whether it's Social Security going bankrupt or the CIA being uh, being badly handled or whether it's the DOJ being corrupt and people using it as as a, as a weaponizing uh, effect to go after political opponents. I mean, this is, like a, this is what happens in a banana republic, not in the United States of America. And so that's really what's happening, what's happening here. And I'm really, I, I must say, I, I go on, I know I say this, but I really am concerned. And so enemies among us tries to address some of these issues because there are so many of these people who do trade for their own accounts. I mean, let's take a few examples, no offense, but Joe Biden has been in public service effectively for 50 years. Where did he get all this money? I mean, uh, uh, Dianne Feinstein, where did she get all her money? Uh, you know, what's the name of the, the congresswoman? Oh, God, I'm drawing a blank. No, I'm sorry. I apologize. But um, the black congresswoman out in California, she, she lives not only in, in the special community, she's got gates around her house. She's got security and she criticizes us for wanting our streets to be secured. Where did all that money come from? Well, some people claim insider trading. They claim they knew they had advanced knowledge of things. I mean, is that fair? Is that what this country is built on? I don't think so. And people who hate Donald Trump, which is fascinating to me because I know a lot of very intelligent people who say, I can't vote for him. I don't care. And I say, well, weren't you better off in his administration than what's going on now? It doesn't matter. I hate him. And today, I just saw him today, by the way. I'm down <laughs> doesn't in Florida matter, right now. I hate him. And I was out on the golf course, and he showed up, and we said hello because I've talked to him before, and he waved to me. He told me I still have a nice swing, and I congratulated him. <laughs> but, but here's a guy, probably the only president you can name in the last 50 years who came out of office with less money than he started with. I mean, Obama was was a community organizer, and he's now a multi multi millionaire from being president. Trump's the only guy who suffered economically. So this is something we really need to take a look at, guys. We really do. What can we do? Uh, what can we do? I mean, well, we can vote the bad guys out of office. Let, let's start with this proposition. We have to stop getting into. We have to stop getting into personality politics. Somebody on somebody posed an interesting question today. Um, somebody posed a question today, and it, I, th I thought it was quite fascinating. If you had not listened to any news or read any newspaper or anything for the last seven years, let's pretend you did that. And then you said, okay, were you better off in the first four years that you, that you lived through or these past three years? Okay, let's think about this. We had no inflation. We had closed borders. We had no wars. <laughs> we had energy independence. And now what have we got? We've got migrants pouring across the border. We've got crime in the street. We've got inflation that they lie about because they don't include food prices in the calculation of inflation. And you're telling me because you don't like a man's personality that you are not going to vote for him and you're going to vote for Joe Biden? And I said, one of these guys that I just spoke to today I said, listen, we have enough dead presidents. Why would you vote for one? <laughs> Uh, IQ, I got questions, but please. Uh, no, no I, I'm listening. I'm very happy. One thing I need to ask you, the painting behind you, the painting behind you. Yes. Beautiful. What is it? Which one is it? I have no idea. <laughs> it is a sound. That is amazing. Uh, um, it's a Matisse on acid. <laughs> I have no I promise you, I have no clue. I had nothing to do with the decoration of this place. But this is beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank, thanks. I'm glad you like it. That is amazing. <laughs> and the book. Like it. it's, it's so the nice title, here, the, the title of your book is "The Enemies Amongst Us." And en enemies among us, um, as you were so kind to say in the beginning, it's JeffreyStevens.com, and I have to say this all the time: Stevens with a PH, because then people can't find me. Um, <laughs> we have a wonderful promotion right now, by the way, to get the book out there. That on Kindle on Amazon, it's only a dollar ninety-nine. 
So I wish people would go out there and grab it and read it and then get back to me. You could reach me through my website and tell me if you liked it, if you didn't like it. I just love to hear from people who have read my work and to let me know what you think and so on. But I had can a lot I, of help with this book, a lot of can, help, particularly can, the big pharma issues. Can I order it in England? I'm in England. Sure. Oh, sure. You could order it. Oh, yeah. Order it on Amazon and, and get the Kindle for buck ninety nine. No, no, I buy the book. I, I hate okay, well, let, that's even. <laughs> I, I IQ likes much. to have the book to flip through. He's well, he's I, not I a love Kindle you very guy. Much, then. And, and uh, yes, you can get it through Amazon. And Jeffrey, I promise you, I will send you back feedback. I, I promise oh, you. I'm that's saying. wonderful. I hope that. By the way, I hope that includes a lot of five star reviews on Amazon and elsewhere. <laughs> but anyway, but whether you like it or not, I hope you read it and I hope it intrigues you because. There, it raises a lot of a lot of issues. It's fun. I mean, and by the way, un, I, I hope your listeners understand. It, this is not a scholarly work. This is not War and Peace. This is an entertainment. <laughs> and they can't awesome. put it down. But um, but it does raise some issues, and it, it gives us some pause about. And, and one of the key things in it, as we say. In this book, it's very difficult to tell the good guys from the bad guys. I mean, you read James Bond, okay, you know Goldfinger, he's two-dimensional, you know he's a terrible guy, you know Dr. No is a terrible guy. The characters in this book are three-dimensional characters, and so it's not easy to just outright hate anybody until you get into where they're coming from. But the people who are controlling this country, they need to be held accountable, and how, the only way we have to do that as, as little citizens that we are, is go to the polling booths and vote for the candidates who have integrity and who mean well for this country, not who are trading for their own accounts. Well, I'm going to ask you a question, Jeff. How do you recognize them? I mean, if you look at the crop um, of uh, officials uh, vying for our vote, I, I, I always ask the question, who would you want to bring home to dinner? And, well, that, and the, If tomorrow, God forbid, I needed open heart surgery and I had two surgeons that I could choose from and one was a really avuncular, friendly, wonderful guy, but he had a sketchy reputation as a surgeon and we had some doubts about him. The other guy is nasty, arrogant, obnoxious, and he's the top open heart surgery doctor in the world. Who would you want to pick? The second one. <laughs> okay, so I don't. If you want to, if you want to have somebody home to dinner, call me. I'm delightful. <laughs> I don't need to know who we want home for dinner. What I want to know is who is going to get the job done. And when Donald Trump was president, and and let's listen. I get all of his flaws. I get his personality disorders. I understand all of that. When Donald Trump was president, they yeah. weren't invading the Ukraine. They weren't invading yeah. Taiwan. Jeff, I'm going to stop you right there. Go ahead. You know how everybody says that. They say, we like Trump, but but he's got these flaws. To my way of thinking, everybody has flaws. You don't say to someone, you know, you don't say to, you know, John Jones, and he's a good, he's a good lacrosse player, but, but, he, but he's got a nasty temper. Why is it that everybody makes excuses for, for Trump rather than just say it's it's the character that made him what it is. So he can withstand all of these. Could you and I have withstood all of the slings and arrows of the last seven years? No way. No way. And Okay, so I've got a lot to say about that, if you don't mind. Number one, the first time I met Donald Trump, we had dinner together. I was introduced by friends. Melania was pregnant with Barron. That's how long ago it is. So what is that, 20 years ago, maybe? And we had dinner at Mar-a-Lago. I'm not one of these wealthy guys, but my friend was, and I sat at Donald Trump's table. He couldn't have been a nicer guy. So when you talk about somebody who you want to have dinner with, he was delightful. So, so, so that's number one. Number two, the reason that we're dealing with the slings and arrows and so on is because the media, for seven years since he came down that escalator in Trump Tower, has been after this guy because they don't like him. He's not one of them. That's a thing. Third, my biggest client is a wonderful, brilliant guy. He's 91 years old. 
He's just one of the smartest people, if not the smartest guy I've ever known. And he said to me early on, and he, he's a Trump fan and he's a conservative, but he said to me early on, here's what people don't understand. All you need to know about Donald Trump's attitude is he's a New York real estate developer. That's what he is. And when you think about it, that's how he approaches things. Can we get this done? Can we get it done cheaply? If you screw around with me, I'm not going to pay you. I mean, that's, that's, how, that's how he operates. So I'm with you on this. And I really am. I really think that that's how you have to look at it. But unfortunately, he has been cast as this demon and this Trump derangement syndrome that is so rampant in the media. They are not hearing this. A woman was the other day in Georgia. You know what I'm talking about. Okay, so her roommate comes on TV, a roommate or a best friend, I, I, I'm not exactly sure. She comes on TV and they're interviewing her and, and asking her what, and she's it's so tragic. And obviously this, this young woman was a wonderful woman. And this girl said something that chilled me. She said, you know, gosh, I, you know, I really didn't understand this migrant problem and all these people coming across the border. Now, just think about that. Almost 10 million people have illegally crossed our border. But she watches CNN, MSNBC, and she didn't have a clue because right. they're not telling her. Right. So right. We've, got, we've got an information outage in this country. So how do we get people who don't agree with us to at least listen to what's going on? I mean, there is no way that Hamas, in my opinion, I could be wrong, but I don't believe that Hamas would have launched that attack in Israel on October 7th if Donald Trump were president. I don't think there's a chance in you know where. I just don't believe it. I don't believe Putin would have invaded the Ukraine. Yes, you're absolutely right. Yeah, we have good leadership. You don't have leadership. That's it. That's the whole point. You don't well, have. You, you, have le you have leadership, but it's not Joe Biden. It's coming from uh, Barack Obama and yeah. the money people behind them. And that's who's, that's who's wagging the dog here. And it's unfortunate because, and by the way, I don't think that, uh, that Obama is any kind of like a, a Chinese operative, but because of Hunter and because of the things that he's done, Joe is a compromised public servant. There's no way he should be in the White House. It's ridiculous. They wanted to impeach Trump on a false narrative about the, the Russian collusion hoax. But the, here you've got a guy in the White House who's conceivably the biggest crook in the history of Washington. He makes he makes Richard Nixon look like look like a, an altar boy. And so we're but we're not doing anything because the media is not letting it happen. And because most Americans listen to that stuff and they don't even know what's going on. They don't know about Eagle Pass, Texas. They don't know about El Paso. They don't know what's happening in the in this. I mean, they were literally laughing on MSNBC the other night, I think it was two nights ago, they were laughing about the crime being caused by the migrants, saying that, ho, 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 I guess Virginia's on the border, huh? And the other one says, oh, yeah, it's on the border of West Virginia. Ha, ha, ha. Meantime, people are being killed. People are being raped. People are being molested. People are being robbed. The, the, the endless crime in the streets. And they want to tell us, well, actually, it went down 2% last week. Yeah, you know, from all-time highs. That's what it went down from. So there's work to be done here, and we need to spread the word. That's the only thing we could do. And if people don't want to listen, then they'll reap the whirlwind. Well, let me ask you a question. I, I'm, 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 I firmly believe that uh, Joe Biden will not be the nominee. Uh, if, if he were not, who do you think would be the nominee? I agree with you. I think I think Trump's going to run against Gavin Newsom. That's honestly what I believe. I, I, I could sound crazy, but I think they, they can have Biden. There are too many Democrats who don't even believe he can serve out the term. You can't have a laughing hyena as as vice president who's then going to take over as commander in chief. I mean, it's unthinkable. And so what they're going to do is, I think, and it may not come till the convention, but at some point, Something is going to happen, something bad. I hate to say it, but something's going to happen, and they're going to say, this guy can't run for president. We're not going to back Harris. And so it's going to be Gavin Newsom. And he makes slick Willie Clinton 
look like look like the most honest guy in the world. I mean, this guy, Gavin Newsom, all you got to do is look at California. Say, oh my God! Scary. I mean, did you guys see that debate with um uh, with DeSantis? Did you see that? I'm oh, sorry. Did the you DeSantis see when Newsom debate. and DeSantis debated? No, no, no. It was unbelievable. The two, I mean, DeSantis is saying, well, wait a minute, look at this. San Francisco is, is a hellhole. People are living on the street in, in L.A. And, you know, Newsom, he is so slick, he's just laughing it off and saying, oh, you know, it's okay. It's not, listen, it's not that bad. Let's talk about what a bad guy Donald Trump is. And, mm-hmm. and I'm telling you, Democrats are going to listen to that. Let's hope they're wrong. Um, I just, two days ago, read um, a manuscript about, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, about uh, the run-up to uh, Franklin Roosevelt's fourth term and what was being uh, said, because everybody that looked at him knew he was not going to survive. Right. And it's very interesting. The all of the records are still, uh, you may or may not know, are still under seal. Uh, indicate that the the uh, the White House staff was urging him not to run, not to run. Um, but he simply said. Well, what would happen with the war effort? By this time, uh, you know, the, the Nazis, uh, Germany was uh, uh, back on their heels, and uh, the Pacific War was moving. And uh, I haven't finished the manuscript, but I found it interesting that his staff was urging him not to run and to make it an open con- convention. But his fear was that Henry Hopkins, his vice president, would be the nominee. And he just did not trust them. What do you? Uh, yeah. I don't know if you're uh, familiar with any of that. Oh, I am. I am. It's it's ver- it's a very fascinating part of history because when you think about it, when when he was elected for the first fourth term, it was uh, what, November of 1944. Correct. Correct. D Day had already happened. The war right. was over, so they didn't need him. To lead the war effort, as the the famous saying that you know power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Once people get in the White House, they don't want to leave. Jill Biden, if Joe wants to go, Jill doesn't want to let it go. She wants to be in the White House. Yes. But what was fascinating about the FDR story was how Harry Truman became vice president. They had no relationship. Prendergast. And and exact Prendergast, exactly right. Well said. Oh, you're quite the erudite man. And so. What happened was you had a vice president in there that no one believed should be vice president and certainly no one ever considered as a presidential candidate, but it was ridiculous because everyone knew FDR wasn't going to live out the term. Right. It's crazy, right? I, I talk about politics. Uh, so uh, anyway, so, so and, and, and Harry Truman turns out to be a good president on many levels. So, yeah, but, but people, it's like Biden now, you would think if he were any kind of patriot at all, he would take a step back and say, I'm not in a position to lead this country anymore. I mean, forget about my vision for the future. He doesn't have it. He doesn't have his marbles. And he should take a step back and say, okay, let's think about who my successor should be. And that might be smart. And there are guys out there who are competent and who could be doing this. But certainly not Kamala Harris. And anyway, he doesn't want to give it up. And Jill doesn't want to stop being first lady. So there you go. So now we got... We got Trump and Biden again, but you know something? I actually agree with you. I really think that it's at least possible, if not likely, that Biden doesn't make it to the election, that somebody else takes over. Um, unfortunately, I agree, agree with you. But yeah. uh, to, to me, uh, well, uh, reading this manuscript, which is unfortunately not very good, about uh, uh, the run up to uh, the election in 44. Uh, what was hampering him is that all of the files are still are still sealed. Yeah. Sealed. Um, I hope I live long enough for them to be unsealed because I'd yeah, like. Interesting. Yeah, for sure. 
I'm going to ask you a question. Because you are, you wrote a thriller. Do, would you agree that what the Democrats are, have been doing to Trump is called projective identification? Which means to blame the victim. They blame Trump for what themselves have been doing. They are the ones who are corrupt. They are the ones who are undermining the Constitution. It's called projective identity. It's in psychology. You know, I, Look I don't it know up. why I would take that approach, because I don't think, I don't think that, that they're projecting that. I mean, they are making uh, Trump a victim, obviously. Um, I, I think of it more, and, and I'm not going to say I don't buy that theory. I think of it more that what they're doing is they're taking somebody who scares them because he can do a better job than they can do. And so whenever anything goes wrong, they blame him. I mean, it is, it's really stunning to me, guys, that they get on TV and blame Donald Trump for, right. the, for the crisis at the border. I, I mean, just, I mean, think about the lack of integrity in that argument. And yet, he's going to push that tonight. He's going to push that tonight, and in, 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 there's no question about it. In the State of the Union, he's going to say that it's Trump's problem because Trump has influenced the Republicans in the House not to buy into the bill that he wants passed. This is Biden. Now, we all know that Biden didn't need a bill. What Biden did through executive order was he undid all the good that Trump had done in managing the border while Trump was president, and all he has to do is is reverse his executive orders, and yet he is going to blame Trump. So is that what you're saying in, in terms of projecting? Yes, onto, that's yes, exactly what Yes, I guess it is, in a way. Well, I, I would rather they, if, if Biden continues with this kind of accusation during his speech, the Republicans should move and get out of, and get out. Just you mean walk leave. out of the State of the Union? Walk out, yes, walk out. Just don't shout, believe. don't insult him, don't do anything, <laughs> just walk out. See, the problem I have with that, and, and I respect your view on that, the problem I have with that is I don't think that serves our country. We have to start healing. We have to start bringing people back together. I know there are lunatics on both, uh, on both ends of, of, of the fringes of these arguments, but we, if we do that, then we will get blamed as being unreasonable, un-American. We're not willing to listen. I just don't see that. I just think you sit there, you don't clap, and, and you suffer through it. Um, it's sort of, you don't want to be, when Nancy Pelosi... ...low class as a low class woman can be, and she's a low class woman. I mean, she, I believe she's a thief. I believe she insider trades. I believe her husband is way out there on the spectrum. And <laughs> she ripped up Donald Trump's speech. I mean, how is that a way for a Speaker of the House to act? We don't want to do that. We have to be bigger than that. And that's the point. And that's the one thing that I wish Trump, as, as with all the things good and bad, like the other night after Nikki Haley said she was dropping out. He started to say some conciliatory things, but then it's as if he can't help himself and he starts name calling and he starts criticizing. We don't need more of that in this country. We <laughs> need to pull together. And I don't want another 9-11 to be the catalyzing factor of that. I don't want a war to be the catalyst for us coming together because Americans are great at that when we're in the middle of a crisis. Let's not need a crisis. Let's just realize that we're no longer energy independent, that the Arab world, they're, they're printing money like it's going out of style because of their oil reserves, and we have the oil here, and we're not doing anything about it. We're letting millions pour across our borders and contaminating our biggest cities. I mean, I'm an originally a New York kid, and let me tell you something. I've never in my life been in a situation where I would walk down the Madison Avenue in Midtown and keep looking over my shoulder because it's so scary there at this point. And that's just anecdotal. That's not that's not statistical. But San Francisco, look at it. Los Angeles, Chicago. I just met a young guy uh, in a restaurant yesterday, at 37 years old, and he's and he lived in a good part of Chicago. 
and he was thinking about moving down to Florida and he works out of his home and he hears these noises. He goes up, there's gunshot out on the street. This is in a decent neighborhood. There was a carjacking, two people got shot. And he said, that was it. And he picked up his family, two young kids, and they moved down to Florida. That's what's going on in this country. And we need people, we need leaders. As, some, as one of you said earlier, we, we don't have leadership and that's what we need. And so if we get out and walk out on Biden, it's not, it's not a good optic for us. What we Jeffrey, need to do is I retract, you together. are right. I have to retract. I agree with you 100%. I retract. I, no, no, I agree with you. Look, I would never stand by my word because it would be stupid if I'm doing something wrong. And you corrected me. You're absolutely right. They should stay, shout, don't shout, don't do anything, eat the crap, and then let him self-destruct. Right. Right. For example, there's something going on tonight. I don't know if you're aware of this or if you're up to date on this thing. But Trump says that what he's going to do tonight is he's going to do a real time fact check on all the claims that Biden makes. Yes, during I read that. Union yeah, yeah, yeah. You heard I that? Know about it. Yeah, yeah. Bad idea. It's a bad idea. It's a bad image. Just a bad image. It's, it's not what you want to do. It, it's going to destroy himself. Let him do it. <laughs> yeah, correct. Let, correct. let Biden get up there and make a fool of himself. That's what like, I just said. Yeah. yeah, I agree with you 100%. Yeah. In the Wall Street Journal today, uh, Collins said uh, uh, a week from now they won't remember the speech. The, probably the only thing they'll remember is the, the mistake that he made. Well, that's, that's helpful if that's true. But what you don't want to do is you don't want to say they won't make they won't remember the speech and they won't remember the mistake. What they'll remember is how Donald Trump picked on him. That's you know, that's what you don't want the headline to be. You don't want that. Nope. Well, Jeffrey, uh, before we let you go, uh, well, actually, let's start with IQ Al Rizzoli. IQ, uh, how do we get your books, my friend? Uh, they are also on Amazon, a trilogy, Lifting the Veil, the True Faces of Muhammad and Islam. Jeffrey, you deal with the spies and everything. I deal with Islam. <laughs> That's my forte. Yeah. Excellent. I'm going to get that book, I promise. <laughs> so, I Don, promise. Uh, bring us up to speed on your book. <clears throat> well, Ruler of the Seas is the name of my book. And by the way, Jeff, uh, there's three volumes. The third volume almost mirrors your book talking about the venal government people. Uh, then is and two SB Digest, uh, hashtag SB Digest, um, uh, and the Na National Robotics Education Foundation. Okay, uh, that's, that, that's enough, Jeff. Uh, I'm going to get all this down. Wait a minute, hold on. <laughs> down to get these books. Okay. Well, the ruler of the seas. Uh, um, Got it. I'm going to look for, look forward to yours, and. Uh, you should uh, look forward to seeing you again on uh, Jimmy's show. So, so Likewise. Jeffrey, uh, before we let you go, how do we get your book, and, and what's next for you as an author, my friend? Okay, well, look, you know, I always like to support independent bookstores. Uh, it's, you know, it's tough for them to carry large inventories, so you may have to order it, but Enemies Among Us is available there. It's obviously the 800-pound gorilla is Amazon. You could order it there and have it in a couple of days. And as I say, if you're a Kindle reader, right now we're having a promotion. It's $1.99, which is kind of a neat thing. And um, after this, I'm working on the third book in the Nick Reagan series. And I'm also working on a new series about an attorney in New York because in my other life, I'm a lawyer. And so I've, I'm, written, I'm writing some books about, uh, you know, legal kind of thrillers, uh, suspense novels. And I'm working on those things. But mostly, I'm just hoping that America heals itself this year. We come to the right decision in November, and we get back on track. Because right now, we are definitely off the rail, off the rails. Jeffrey, you must come again next week. Could you make it jiggy? 
Could 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 you be on next week, no, no, Jeffrey? I mean, for, you for, guys for... let me know. This was a lot of fun. You guys let me know. Let's see, let's see what happens with the State of the Union. We'll talk again. Exactly. That's why I want to see you. Next That's week. what I was thinking. Was was you could come on same time next week and fill us in on your view on the uh, State of the Union. That might be fun, my friend. I would oh, love goodness. it. All right. Well, we'll talk. Okay. Right. Well, we'll talk Let to everybody know. next I'll week hear. then. I'll and okay. uh, thank you guys. There they I'll go. Hear. That is I'll Jeffrey hear. Stevens, IQL Ooh. Rizzoli, and uh, Don Mazzella. And that is the first time that has ever happened to me where we have booked a guest for the exact same next week. So we will get that figured out next week here on our world famous Chiggy Jaguar radio broadcast thanks for joining us and uh, we will see you next time thanks for twitching with us on the twitch and of course if you're listening to us on the stream thank you if you are listening to